All right, testing. Yo, 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 here we are. We're discussing my swim right now. It's a very important matter, and we've had some serious disruption coming in from the garage and the roommate who's always making lots of noise no matter what we do, so we're going to have to reshoot the whole video, unfortunately. Ooh, see, now we're really going to have to reshoot the whole video. <laughs> no, no, no. This is serious. So, you know how there's such thing as like sleepwalking? Yeah. I think there's such thing as sleep driving. Yeah. Did you just sleep drive? Be no, because people don't know how to drive. Oh, it's also They're sleep driving. I, I don't mean to be rude, but it's also called being old, which there's a lot of that here in Oro Valley. <laughs> All right, give me the countdown. Ten. Nine. <laughs> Ah, there we go. Cheers, everyone. And yo, 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 here we are discussing my swimming. Yeah, so here I am. I mean, this is my, this is my new house. Um, and no, I'm not really just here for the winter. Uh, I've actually moved to Oro Valley. And a big reason is for the roommate who you've been getting to see this week. And the other main reason is to elevate my swim. So I, I've actually been coming to Tucson for a while. And Last winter here, um, I worked with the same coach that Lionel works with, Aqua Bear. His name's Justin, and he's a really good coach for swimmers who didn't grow up kind of with a swimming background because he really focuses on feel for the water. Positive, energetic guy. He believes in us, and, and that's honestly the most important thing is to actually have a swim coach who believes in me. I've had a lot of swim coaches who have been negative in the past and kind of always coming from places of like, you, you're bad, you suck, you suck. Why can't you just be better? Why can't you just be better? And um, I think coming from a place of negativity when you coach is, is never a good thing. And he always comes from a place of positivity. And no matter where you are, whether you're swimming 145 per 100 or one minute pace per 100, it's always enthusiastic and yet finding room for growth. And so that's been a super positive uh, thing. I've been doing that like two or three times a week. That's in the mornings. And then we also, you've gotten to see some of our noon group, which is another great group I swim with. And that's a whole bunch of former collegiate swimmers, powerful guys with a great culture. And that's also just, it's a great swimming culture and we show up and it's a shorter practice, but we get to work every day. Someone else, write, someone different from the group writes the set every day, but we have a known structure. So whatever day of the week it is, you know what to expect. And together with those two swims, I'm almost never swimming on my own, unless if it's a recovery swim where I'm just working on drills and technique and really slowing things down, which is also something I've been doing a lot of. And so whenever I'm swimming hard and wanting to be pushed, I've got a coach or I've got a group with me. And so it's making it way easier than going to the pool and um, trying to get in that quality when I'm tired or it's just way harder to get motivated when it's, you're on your own in the pool. So those two groups have been game changing and I do a once weekly just underwater footage and then I really analyze that and then I write out very clear cut goals of like, this is what I'm working on this week and I keep it to two or three things after analyzing that and then I'll often review that after or before every practice and I'll watch some of the footage and so then every time I'm at the pool, it's not just, oh, get the yards done swim as fast as possible. I now have this overarching mindset. This is probably the most important thing I'll say. It's like only swim as fast as you can while maintaining those technique factors I'm working on. And so I'll never like start flailing or trying to do things to get those extra seconds. I'll just swim slower. And if I feel like I'm losing it, I'll sit out of 50 and so, or a hundred or take a quick break and then continue with the set. And so I think that's, it's that mindset that's been really important. In the past, I've done kind of two things with my season. I've always gone in sort of the off season. I've done just straight technique work, really slow, tons of drills. I mean, I'm almost never swimming under like 145 pace per 100 yards. And then I would do that for like two months, 10 weeks. And then I would all of a sudden start trying to implement that in my stroke. And it would actually set me back because then I didn't do any threshold work and any actual pace work for 10 weeks. And then it would take me another 10 weeks to get back there. So all of a sudden it was taking me 20 weeks just to get back to where I was. And then eventually I'd see gains. And we saw this in my season last year where I kind of swam poorly despite feeling like I had done a lot of work, which I had done a lot of work. My hours in the pool had been a lot, but I hadn't done the right type of work. So now it's, it's a approach where I'll 
try and do the same stuff most of the year and it's technique and stroke and when I say stroke I don't mean I am I mean like pace work it's all ingrained in every week and that's going to be the difference and then I'll carry that through I know it'll fall off a little bit right now I'm swimming about 30,000 yards a week um, with one or two doubles a week um, it'll likely come down I don't want it to come below like 26,000 throughout the season unless if it's a race week so that's kind of the that's kind of the plan and then the other big thing I did it's it has to do with the swim bike run how it all fits together is I've tried I've changed workouts around so that I'm swimming when I'm fresh and so I'm modifying like a great example is on Wednesdays I have a hard run a hard swim and then now I do a bike ride and I used to always do the hard run before the swim and now I wait to do the hard run after the hard swim. That way I can get the quality in the swim. So the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And um, I've definitely made big gains with my swimming. So it's not to say I couldn't have kept going with the same sort of plan I've done every year, but I, I felt like I needed to get smarter about how I was working on my swim and, and come up with a much more clear cut strategy. and. And the strategies come about by learning from the, the mistakes I've made in the past. And yeah, it's it's all in on the swim. And I mean, I moved here. It's um, I feel like I'm making a huge commitment about it. Um, and I'm just so focused on consistency. I'm not I'm not willing to lose a week in this so-called off season. Which the fact that it's called off season is uh, complete baloney because I'm training. Uh, like 30 hours a week and working really hard um, to be the best athlete I can. So just because there's not races doesn't mean uh, I'm not working in the dark. And yeah, if I want to be at the top, if I want to be at the, you know, go from second in the world um, at the world championships, I know I'm ranked fourth or whatever in the PTO, which is great. Third, maybe if you, if you look at it uh, as of a few weeks ago, anyways, fourth or second, anyways, I'm ranked somewhere between second and fifth in the world. Um, but if I want to get up to that top step, I know it's going to take my swim. Jan Frodeno called me a duathlete at Collins Cup, and I want to change that notion. So time to get to work. Oh, yeah, the location. Um, I think in general, there's sort of always two overarching like thoughts of any facility you ever go to. And it's kind of like, do you want the nicest, bougiest, like the facility is you know, everything's top of the line and, or do you want sort of like a training dungeon, so to speak, and somewhere where it's gritty and you show up and it's just, uh, you get to work and, and this pool, it's, it's basically in a dirt parking lot. There's all sorts of crazy stuff around it. Um, I mean, basically like stuff you would think was collected from the dumpster or something. Um, but it's, it's where everyone's going to swim here right now. And, it's way less about the facility and way more about the people that show up and the culture you create. And, and I actually think having the sort of uh, whatever you want to call it, not great facilities makes, makes the culture better in a way because we're all there to get work done. We're not there to whatever, uh, sit in the sunshine and talk about rainbows and fairy tales. It's like this, this, this life of being the top triathlete in the world, it's not a fairy tale. And, and our pool shows that and it, it takes hard work to get there. So I, I couldn't be happier with the pool we've got.